So have you ever heard of a mushroom called Psilocybe atlantis? There's a good chance you might have heard of it or you've never heard of it, but just like the city of Atlantis, this mushroom's lost forever to history. There's a really crazy story behind this and we're running the risk of this happening to many other mushrooms that we love, cherish, and hold close to us. It's up to us to stop this from happening. So that's exactly what we're gonna be talking about in this video. I think you guys are gonna enjoy this. Let's go. Dripping on acid in the hotel lobby. Everything moving hella fast, Ricky Bobby. Floating in the ethers. Listen to the ethers, you can probably tell the future. Superhuman man. What's going on, Trip Team? First of all, I wanna welcome you guys back to a brand new video. Now, I know I haven't dropped a video on YouTube in a little while, but don't worry, guys. Every single week, I drop new videos. Just not all of them can be put up on YouTube. I have a private library on Patreon, so if you guys wanna go over there, check it out. Get in the private chat room, our marketplace, meetups, things like that. Go check it out. It's definitely worth it. You can get in for as little as $2 a month, and there's tons of private videos that you can't get anywhere else. With that said, here's some of those videos right here that's been popping up the last couple weeks while you guys haven't seen a YouTube video. There's still tons of amazing videos popping up on Patreon, so make sure you guys go check it out. I mean, some of these videos, if you see these thumbnails, they're absolutely insane. I just can't put them up here, but you guys can go watch them instantly right this second if you go over to Patreon. As always, my Instagram's right there. Make sure you guys go check it out. There's a lot of fake accounts that pretend to be me. That's the only Instagram I have right there, official TTF Willy. And of course, we just passed 60,000 subscribers. That's a huge milestone. I'm extremely proud and thankful for every single one of you guys. But a lot of you guys that watch my videos still aren't subscribed. So if you guys are looking for the easiest way to show your support, that you stand with me, you stand with this community, you're part of the Trip Team family, just go down below, hit the subscribe button and the bell off to the side so that way you guys know when I drop new videos. Also, pump up that thumbs up. It really helps out the algorithm, especially for a video this important. This is a video that if you love this community, this is your world, you wanna get this video out so that a lot of people could understand what's happening and how we could prevent it. With that said, I wanna thank every single one of you guys. Now let's get into this video. So many, many years ago, even before I got into the mycology space, there was a mushroom by the name of Psilocybe atlantis. I know a lot of you guys have probably heard of this mushroom. I mean, if you live in the Netherlands, they still st sell sclerotia under the name Psilocybe atlantis. The fact of the matter is, it is not Psilocybe atlantis. It's not real Psilocybe atlantis. Now, how did this happen? Was Psilocybe atlantis a real mushroom? Or was it a myth like the city of Atlantis? You know, did it ever really exist in the first place? That's a really good question. And the truth is, yes, it did exist because we do have records of the mushroom. We actually have samples that are cataloged, that are on record, that we can compare other samples to, so we can confirm if it's Psilocybe atlantis or not. And that's kinda how we figured out what was going around being called Psilocybe atlantis wasn't actually Psilocybe atlantis. Now the really cool thing about Psilocybe atlantis is it isn't just a fruit producing mushroom, it also produces sclerotia, or what people call truffles. Now sclerotia and truffles are two completely different things and I'm not gonna get into that in this video, but most people call them truffles. For years, Psilocybe Atlantis went around the community, but something terrible happened somewhere in that realm of things being passed around. All of a sudden, there was a genetic being passed around called ATL number seven. Great, great genetic. Everybody was assuming that this is Psilocybe Atlantis. This is a big problem because now this mushroom's being passed around, everybody thinks it's Psilocybe atlantis, so the real Psilocybe atlantis genetics are somewhere in the wind. Everybody thinks ATL stands for Atlantis. The fact of the matter is, ATL does not stand for Atlantis, it stands for Atlanta. So as people were cultivating these and the real Psilocybe Atlantis genetics got more diluted and more diluted, you know, people weren't cultivating them and passing them around. They were actually passing around ATL number seven, which everybody thought was Atlantis, but wasn't. So one really amazing mycologist by the name of Gaston Guzman, he was the one that has found so many active mushrooms throughout the world. You can just Google Gaston Guzman he, he's a pillar in this community and a lot of the great genetics we have today is because of this man. He had a funny suspicion that what was being grown as Psilocybe atlantis 
wasn't actually Selassie B Atlantis. He thought it was something different. So a sample was sent to him and it confirmed exactly what he was thinking. This is not Selassie B Atlantis. This is Selassie B Gallandoid. And by the time this was all figured out, Selassie B Atlantis genetics, the real genetics, were lost. They were gone. Every single ATL number seven that was tested turned out to be Selassie B. Gallandoy. And this is how they confirmed it. In mycology and DNA and genetics, we have something called sequencing. This is DNA sequencing or genetic sequencing. So when we get a new sample, say the Selassie B. Atlantis, it goes into a system, it goes into a file, and now anytime we want to figure out what a mushroom is, we can sequence its genetic genome, and we can figure out if it matches up with what we have on file. Unfortunately, every single sample that was sent thinking it was Selassie B. Atlantis actually turned out to be Gallandoy. Simply because of a misunderstanding or mislabeling, whether it was intentional or not intentional, it really doesn't matter. We lost these genetics forever. From my understanding, there's only been two samples of Selassie B. Atlantis ever found and no genetics are on the market. No genetics are being passed around of real Atlantis. Now that's the story behind Selassie B. Atlantis. So let's talk about currently what is the biggest threat to the genetics that we currently have. The biggest threat is renaming or relabeling existing genetics. Now, this is gonna bring up a sore spot with a lot of people, but I really don't care because my obligation is to the community and mycology. I really don't care. I don't mean to sound horrible, but fuck your feelings. At the end of the day, this is about mycology. It's about our community. And it's up to us to protect it. And if you have an issue with me speaking about an actual issue that's going on in this community that threatens all of us, then I'll just let her explain it. Catch me outside, how about that? Renaming or relabeling something that already exists is just not right. It, it's not right. It's something that shouldn't be happening. The fact of the matter is this is happening on a bigger scale than it ever has in the history of this community. And that's because more and more people are getting involved. Now, when I say renaming or relabeling, I'm talking about taking something that's already out there and renaming it something completely different. So you're growing B+, you get a mutation, and now all of a sudden you call that mutation, I don't know, Dragon's Blood. Something crazy, you know, some weird exotic name just to put it out there. So you're the only one that has this, right? You, you have Dragon's Blood. You've isolated dragon's blood or whatever you want to call it and now you're gonna sell and give out these spores to the community under that name you're trying to create hype we've seen this happen in the cannabis industry way before we ever got here you know we we seen land race strains be erased because of renaming and you know people saying that they cross this with this and just creating a genetic mess. And that's what we're seeing with mycology at this point in time. Worse than even renaming something that's been isolated or grown by somebody is putting something out there under false pretenses. So what I mean by that is let's take something really rare. Let's take a rare cubensis. Let's say elephant gate, for example. For a long time, elephant gate wasn't available to the public. So mushroom John Allen discovered elephant gate and it was like gifted out to people. It was given to certain people. And if you didn't get a sample from that original sample, then pretty much, you didn't have elephant gate. But what people decided to do was take something like B plus, I'm just using B plus as an example, guys. It's just using it because it's a very common one. And then they just started labeling it elephant gate. So now this vendor has elephant gate and they could sell you elephant gate, even though it's not actually elephant gate. So by the time we realize, hey, this is an elephant gate, now we need to backtrack and figure out where the real elephant gate is. And if we can't find it, we lose that genetic forever. Do you see how this is a big problem? This is a huge problem. And this is what's going on right now. Another big issue that puts these genetics at risk is something called genetic hoarding. Now, let me explain what genetic hoarding is. Genetic hoarding is these people that have these huge libraries, but never let nothing out to the community. 
They keep everything for themselves. And by the time they do go to run anything or give something away, the genetics are dead. They've sat too long. You know, they're not viable anymore. And this is a big, big problem. Another thing is they don't want to put the genetics out there because they feel like that they want to be the only ones to have it. And if they put them out there, then people are going to start selling them. It, it's absolutely ridiculous. It's one of the most ridiculous things I've ever heard. Another case of genetic hoarding is these people that have these genetics and they find them and they don't want to release them because they feel like they own them. They have rights to that mushroom because they found it. If you think that, if that's honestly the thought process in your head, you are a space cadet. You're completely out there. You are so far out there, there's no going to retrieve you. Nobody can own anything that is natural. If you found a mushroom outside, it does not belong to you. Those genetics do not belong to you. It is a land race. You do not own them. Now, if you take that land race and you can prove that you hybridized it with something else and created something brand new that could never be found anywhere, sure, you want to say you're the owner of it, go for it. But if you find a land race, you don't own it. I'm, I'm sorry. I hate to burst your little bubble or whatever it is. You don't own it. That's about as dumb as me going outside and saying, I own this tree. This tree belongs to me. I found it. Do you, do you understand how insane that sounds? Well, if you don't think that sounds insane, then you're probably one of the people that are doing that and I wish you the best of luck. I am telling you right now, that's pretty much what dogs think when they go outside and pee on a tree. Every time they pee on a tree, they think that that's their tree. They're marking that tree, that's their property. So all the power to you, but pretty much that's another example of genetic hoarding. Now, don't get me wrong. There is things like isolations and things like that. And if you want to rename an isolation, there's a certain standard that we stick to. So if you take PE, you isolate something really cool, some cool mutation or some cool isolate or whatever the case may be. And you want to call it Derek's PE. That's perfectly fine. At least we know it's penis envy and this is Derek's isolation, right? So they, they're, you, you've got something that you've created that's really cool and maybe people like it. Maybe you put it out there and people don't like it. It really doesn't matter, but you did that and you're getting notoriety for it. Your name's there and it says PE. So we're not losing that lineage. Now the issue is, like I said, if you isolate something and all of a sudden you call it, you know, dragon's balls and all of a sudden, we have no idea where that came from. We don't, we don't know what it is. We don't know what the lineage is. All we know is there's this new genetic on the market called Dragon's Balls, right? And, and all of a sudden, you know, people are amped up and hyped up. Oh, Dragon's Balls, I just cultivated this tub of Dragon's Balls, but nobody knows what the fuck Dragon's Balls is. This is the issue. So if you isolate, just keep it within the lineage. You know, I've isolated golden halo and hundreds of other mushrooms right and when i isolated the albino from golden halo i called it albino halo right so we we know where it came from we know it's halo and it's an albino that's what it is albino penis envy we, we know it's a penis envy that's albino that it's in the name it's in the name and we know what it is and we can backtrack it it's public information and the third topic that puts our genetics at risk and this community at risk is fake hybrids now it really doesn't matter which side of the discussion you fall on whether you hate me or love me at the end of the day this is about our community this is about something that we love together that we want to make better so this should really bother you the issue of hybrids popping up every single day just isn't possible what we're seeing a lot of people do is they isolate something or they get they stabilize this really cool mutation or you know, they just hit the genetic lottery from a multi-sport syringe and get something really cool. And now all of a sudden they're calling it this hybrid and they cross this and this when it it never happened. It, it never happened. They're just trying to make it sound exotic. And that's just as bad as everything else I mentioned. Now, I know hybrids are a sore spot for a lot of people and a lot of people are going to feel that you know, they're upset about this. But the fact of the matter, if this upsets you, what I'm saying and probably what these other people are going to say when they come on here, then you're probably part of the problem. Let, let's just face it. You know, if you're not part of this problem and you're hearing this and you're like, oh my God, this is true. Like I'm starting to realize I've been thinking this, whatever. This should upset you that it's hurting our community. 
that it's hurting our community and that we're gonna lose genetics that we love. If you come in and try to defend these actions, then chances are you're probably part of the problem. I mean, it just is what it is and everybody will see it for what it is. We have to have a standard of integrity within our community. And if we're not the ones to set what that integrity is, then pretty much it's the wild west. Mycology becomes the wild west and we can just do whatever we want because we don't really care what happens in the future. A lot of people care about making money right now, but they don't care about the end user. They don't care about the science. They don't care about the community. And that's really sad. And those are the people that really shouldn't be part of this community at the end of the day. Everybody has a right to make money, right? This is, you could start a great business. You can, you can make a lot of money in this space like every other space, whether it's tech or cannabis or whatever. You can make a lot of money in any space. Do it with integrity because I'm telling you, if you don't have integrity, your reign of money making is gonna be very short lived because people are gonna see through it very, very quickly. This has always been my case with vendors, right? We need vendors, there's a lot of great reputable vendors out there, but at the end of the day, I don't work for the vendors. I'm an advocate for this community. I'm an advocate for the viewer of my videos. So I don't care how cool I am with a vendor. If a vendor sucks or a vendor's doing something shady, I'm gonna call it out because I don't care. I don't take no money from them. I don't need anything from them. So at the end of the day, I don't care how they feel. I care about the community. I care about the trip team family. I care about you guys watching this video right now. Now, really quick, I just want to touch on the subject of what brings up controversy in hybrids. For many, many years, there was no hybrids on the market. You know, it was the same old same. You'd see different genetics popping up, um, but it was pretty much the same old same. You didn't see any hybrids. Then all of a sudden, ape comes along, right? Albino penis envy. Everybody knows the story of the albino penis envy. I'm not gonna get into it. But pretty much, albino penis envy is a hybrid of penis envy and I believe an albino treasure coast or an albino B plus, something like that, that created albino penis envy or what we call ape. Now, when this hybrid came out, it caused a lot of controversy. It still does to this day. Is it a real hybrid? That's up for you to decide. I don't know. I wasn't there working on it. I can't tell you if it is or it isn't. Now, the person that created Albino Penis Envy is extremely credible, extremely talented. So if he says it is, I'm going to take it at face value and say it is. But this is where the controversy lies with hybrids, especially ape. Now, regardless of whatever genetics you're working on, whether it's animals, humans, mushrooms, plants, it does not matter. In the genetic genome, there's something called recessive genetics. Now, let me just give you an example of a recessive genetic. Your great-grandfather had purple eyes. Let's just say your great-grandfather had purple eyes. All of a sudden, your grandfather's born, your dad's born, and none of them have purple eyes. You're born, you don't have purple eyes. Your kids are born, they don't have purple eyes. But then your grandkids are born and one of your grandkids are born with purple eyes. For a long time, for many generations, this was a recessive genetic that stayed dormant in the background. But after many generations, it showed up in your grandkid, became a dominant genetic and they have purple eyes just like their great, great grandfather. This happens all the time in humans, animals, plants, mushrooms, it does not matter. There's a thing called recessive genetics, there's a thing called dominant genetics. There's two different types of genetics. What's dominant is what makes you, what's recessive is a genetic that's in the background that just never became dominant, but it's still there in your genetic genome. Where people find an issue with albino penis envy is this right here. Thousands and thousands of people have grown it thousands and thousands of times. And I'm not even just talking about ape, I'm talking about hybrids in general, it doesn't matter. So many of us have cultivated it over and over and over and over. We always get the penis envy shape with the mushroom that it was crossed with pigmentation, making it albino. How come we never get the penis envy color with the shape of the mushroom it was crossed with. We never get the reverse. That says a lot. You could speak to any genetics expert in the world, reach out to them. There is a statistical impossibility that that's possible. It just can't happen. 
at some point in time, many generations, especially after thousands of us cultivating it, thousands and thousands of grows, you're gonna see the opposite. You're gonna see the shape of the Treasure Coast or whatever it was crossed with in the color of the PE. So you're just gonna see everything but reverse. You're at least gonna have one fruit that will pop up with those dominant genetics. You have two parents, they each have a separate set of genetics. You hybridize them, them genetics get passed down. Some genetics become dominant, some are recessive. The recessive ones will eventually surface somewhere down the line. And this is how we could verify hybrids is because if you don't see that somewhere down the line after thousands and thousands of growths, there's probably an issue. Now, how do we get to some of these hybrids that people call hybrids? The fact of the matter is probably less than 1% of them are actually hybrids. The rest of them are just isolations. Now, if you really wanna get really deep into the real actual science of it, if you really wanna get into genetics, science does not consider any mushroom that doesn't drop a spore print a hybrid. It's just not considered a hybrid. For a mushroom to be considered a hybrid, it has to be crossed, grown, drop its own spore print, and reproduce for it to actually be a hybrid. That's the fact of the matter. That's the actual truth. And the truth of the matter is, if you buy any syringe out there from a mushroom that doesn't drop a spore print, you're not actually buying a spore syringe, you're buying a, a live culture. It is what it is. And I hate to put it out there like that, but that's the fact of the matter. Now, technically, is it uh, a hybrid? Did you cross the two? Probably, right? And one of the ways we could prove that something was crossed is by showing the evidence of the connection clamps, showing the evidence of the fusion, if you're doing monoculture fusion to make that hybrid, or you doing mono carry on hybrids. It, it really depends on what you're doing, but regardless, we should be able to see the connection clamp if you're doing a mono fusion. This is the easiest way, the easy, most best way to verify that you actually have a hybrid is by showing the connection clamps. This is what a connection clamp looks like. As you guys could see, this is two different genetics coming together. That's a clamp fusing together the two different lineages. Now, this is one way to prove that you have a hybrid. The issue with mushroom hybridization is that there's just way too many out there. Everything's a hybrid now. And a lot of it, it to be honest, and I, I really don't give a rat's ass, I never do, you guys know me. It's just a gimmick. It's like calling any, you know, we see it in cannabis all the time, calling something something to make it new and exotic, to get the crowds all fired up to purchase it. That's what it is. I'm, I'm just gonna be honest with you guys. Now, are some of the hybrids out there actual hybrids? Yes. With that said, I'd like to bring in a couple of the OGs from this community and let them speak on this topic themselves. I think it's gonna shine a better light on what's going on and how we could fix this. I'm gonna talk about how we could fix this in the end, but for right now, let's let some of them speak because I think it's really important to get an overall consensus from the community. All right, guys, let's pause this really quick. So each one of these people I'm about to talk to have their own full interview. And if you'd like to see the unedited version, the full version, then head over to patreon.com slash Willie Michael, where there's thousands of trip team family members waiting and you could get in on the conversation. I didn't want to drag this video out too long. So I just took the important parts that they brought up in their interview. But if you'd like to see the full thing, then just click the link in the pinned comment below and you could go watch it right now. Now let's get back into this conversation. So the first person I wanna bring in is my brother from Pugod.com, Texas Cubensis King. You know, this is nothing personal, but where, where do you stand on the whole topic of mislabeling genetics, you know, on the fact that we're losing genetics due to mislabeling? Like where, where do you fall with that? Well, man, it's, it's, it's a huge problem um, as this as this industry is is leaving the fetal stage and you know it's kind of more in the toddler stage right now it's, it's it's very popular and I feel like for all the people like you and me who were here before the gold rush before the you know the influx of, of growing mushrooms and stuff you know we were when you got something, it was true to its name. You know, like if you got Golden Teacher, it was actually Golden Teacher. Mazdapec was Mazdapec, et cetera, et cetera. But now, you know, I don't know if it's just 
newbies trying to create a name, trying to get clout or what, but you know, every, everybody is changing everything up. Every time there's a new isolation of something, we're ditching the name and we're naming it something else, you know, like, uh, uh, there's a million different Mel Max and a million different thrashers now, and they all have their own name. None of them are new breeds or just, it's just rename this and rename that, you know, and, and it's the same thing for almost everything now, you know, it, it's all these old land race strains are, are dying out. And the problem with it is obviously to state the number one fact, you know, obviously we're losing that lineage uh, indefinitely, because if we rename B plus, you know, Thrasher, then who's going to really know anymore? And there's not enough old heads anymore to really determine, you know, if you grow something out, oh, well, that's definitely not that. There's No one knows that anymore. You know, it, it's kind of whatever you grow is what you think you actually got. And it's not their fault. You know, they 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 just got into it. And so when they grow that out, they expect it to be that, you know, they expect their strain that they're growing to be exactly what it was said to be. And, it, it, you know, and that's, that's what I've noticed. It's not necessarily anybody's fault anymore. It's just kind of what's being sold to them. And so my biggest, my biggest problem with it is a lot of these old strains, you know, the people who domesticated it from wild or isolated, whatever, a lot of these guys are, are dead or they're on their way out and they put a lot of years into this and that this was everything to them. You know what I mean? They traveled around the world and they were finding new wilds to bring a uh, new land race to the community and bring a new genetic pool uh, to the community. And now, now they're dead or they're dying or they're nowhere to be found. And, and now the, all that hard work is going out the window just because some, someone wanted a little money off of the unknowing. And so what did they do? They renamed it, they spruced it up and they fucking sold it to something else. And now, you know, they're dead and they're not, they can't back that anymore. And their hard work died with them. And so that's the kind of shit that kind of rubs me wrong, you know, and it's happening day in and day out. And I'm sure you see it too, you know, for sure. Um, yeah, man. Um, I've noticed that more and more by the day I would say around 2020, that was the kickoff where people were just, you know, a new hybrid was popping up every fucking day. And, you know, like, it's like you said, I'm not, I'm not saying, I'm not, not saying, I'm not calling out anybody specific. It's just one of those things where, you know, People were following steps. They read on shroomery or whatever old forums were laying around where they could find out, you know, how to hybridize mushrooms. And it's like they followed those steps to the best of their ability. And whatever came out of it, they decided to name it something new. It didn't matter if it was like a failure. It didn't matter if it just, you know, if it was golden teacher and penis envy. It didn't matter if it looked like one or the other they followed the steps. So they assumed they were, you know, they, they did it, they crossed it and everything was cool. And they went ahead and named it. And within a week after that cross, they released it. No one's, no one's trying to stabilize their new hybrids. No one's like, no one's checking the monocarions. They're not putting it under a microscope to see if there's clamp connections They're not testing anything. They're just following steps. They're reading on these old forums and they're just trying it and whatever happens after the first run they're running with it and they're releasing it right away and you know that's that's a big problem because you know 90 i'd say at least 98 percent of the stuff that's being released right now you can easily look at it and go that's not that that's just ape you know what i mean or, or whatever they were working with you're like well that's just the mother that's just the father i mean it's really easy to just look at what they were trying to cross and be like that's not it like and you know and it's the problem now is we live in a world where you can't have a discussion anymore you know if you try to even respectfully say your piece like hey i don't really think that was a hybrid it, you don't have you don't have to make it a public comment. You can even like direct message these people and try to have a discussion. And it immediately turns into, oh, you're just hating. You know, you're a hater. You, you've never done it. You don't know anything about it. like it's just it's an argument 
that leads to nowhere. You know, no one wants to talk about anything anymore. They're just right. You can't correct them. So it's hard. And and that's the problem. We're a community. And I I said it earlier, whether you agree with me or you don't, whether people agree with you or they don't, it's not even, it's bigger than one person. This isn't even, it's about the preservation of our community, the integrity of our community. If the integrity isn't there and all that, brother, I travel the world finding these mushrooms. Like, and it's devastating to see mushrooms that have been brought to the community to get wiped out. Like after all the work that goes into them, you know, thousands of miles sometimes and just, you know, years of work stabilizing something or whatever the case may be, to only have it wiped out, renamed and pushed onto the market as something else. And that, that's the real difficult part. And, you know, a lot of these mushrooms, they look very similar. So it's like, you know, just by looking at things, sometimes you can't tell what something is. You know, from a B plus to a golden teacher, it's like, I don't know. You know, I, I don't know. Like, it, it's a Cubensis. I could tell you, I don't know if it's B plus or a golden teacher. You know, not every golden teacher is the same it, it's not all one lineage that is out there it's it's multiple different golden teachers out there it depends where it came from and who you got it from you know not everybody's working off one genetic and passing it around like it should be instead there's 50 different lineages of golden teacher out there and it just depends on which one you have and they can look drastically different at the end of the day what do you think is the best way to preserve our community. If we could change something right now, stop the hands of time and change things, what would you suggest being the best course of action to try to wean this off and stop it from continuing to go the way it's going? Man. I know that's a heavy question. That's a heavy question. But, you know, I'm just trying to get everybody's perspective on it and, and what they think. You know, should we continue the way we're going? Should we we change things? You know, so just to get more voices out there and to understand different perspectives. Yeah, no, that's a, I mean, you nailed it. It's a heavy question. It's a tough one. Um, I think about it every day. I mean, me and, you know, people like me and you, we talk about it all the time. It's kind of a, it's one of those things where it's kind of like, what do we do? Most of us at this point, I, I mean, I hate to say it, Willie, but most of us have kind of resorted to realizing that, you know, people like you and me and some of the old heads, we're going to have a library that preserves all these old uh, land race uh, lineages and stuff. But uh, most most of us agree that it's kind of it's almost too late already. You know, there's so much stuff that's already been mud blooded and, and washed out and renamed that it's like, how do you even know anymore? Unless you've got spores from, you know, 2013 or prior where things were still really clean and preserved and all that. Well, it's like, uh, I don't really know other than maybe we need to, you know, we need to create either a, a company or a group of companies that are like a collective where we can actually do like spore bolts and stuff where it's actually trusted and, and uh, branded and stuff like that. Yeah, man, it's, it's, it's a tough call because a lot of us have put so much stress and worry into something that's not going anywhere. It's only getting worse that we're kind of resorting to just letting it go and letting it be, you know, and that sucks. It really does because, especially IG, if we're going to talk about IG, that was kind of like, you know, that was like our love child, you know, it it was you and me and Blue Meanie and Mike Ojo and, and it was just us starting everything off. And, and now look, there's, there's hundreds of people a day starting some Mike account, Mike something, you know, and, and that's great. I support the hell out of that, but it's gotten so far off track that, the stress isn't even worth it anymore. If you sit here and stress every day about how I'm going to preserve uh, everything I've worked towards, you, you kind of put yourself in a hole where you're just, you know, you're, you're worried and you're constantly thinking about it. But as far as the solution, man, 
I don't really know other than making making more controversial posts like this, you know, where people aren't going to like to hear this. There's mm -hmm. it, there's people that have been growing for two months now and people that have been growing five years that are, you know, considering themselves veterans already. And they think that they can do this ghetto breeding and all this other stuff where they can just swab two fruits and make hybrids and you know cross two grain jars in a tub and you got a new hybrid and and it's just it's so fucking muddied up already that it's really hard to figure out what to do anymore because it's kind of hard to figure out what's still preserved and what's not but as far as what we can do i mean we got to start standing up uh, there's got to be a nice way to approach people you know where you can at least say hey i i think we should send this in to somebody you know like maybe if we created a group of people that were trusted by at least the mass majority like you and me and and bass and all these other guys mindful that could take a culture and grow it out and examine it under a microscope and just really give a good feedback on whether or not we feel like you created something new. And then if you get the thumbs up by at least the mass majority, you know, it's like, Hey, release it to the, release it to the community or something like that. I don't really know. Yeah. yeah, no, no. yeah I get it, brother. It, this is like a new frontier, right? So it, it's like, we're figuring it out as we go. And I, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. I, I, I feel like, like you said, it, it's something, Hopefully, when people see stuff like this and, and they actually understand the repercussions of it, it makes them sad because you're losing something so special, right? Like, it's gone. It's gone forever. Like, Psilocybe Atlantis, you're never going to be able to grow that. There's only been two samples ever found, and we wiped it out by mislabeling, you know? And it's like, when something like that happens... It's like a piece of you is gone. Even if you had nothing to do with bringing it to the market or finding it, it's something you're never going to be able to experience. And that's the sad part about it. And you'll see it happen time and time and time over again, because this is the path that we're going down if it continues. And it, it's important for people to understand this is bigger than me. This is bigger than you. It's bigger than them. This is a community issue. And this is for future generations to come. And if we don't change things up, it's going to become a bigger problem because there is no, we could sequence, right? So we could sequence, but the time and effort into sequencing every single fruit that grows, sending it off to get it sequenced to see what it matches up with in a library is going to be painstaking. Now, the thing with sequencing, it's not going to tell us if it's a golden teacher or a B plus. It's just going to tell us it's a Psilocybe cubendus. It's going to tell us it's genus. It's going to tell us that much. It, it, it's not really going to tell us, you know, this is a B plus or a golden T. It's not going to do all that. We don't have a database like that, unfortunately. I wish there was, but there isn't. Because then we could just verify you know, hybrids really easy by sending them off and seeing a 50-50 split between the parents, but it, it's not that simple. So, you know, if we do dilute this enough, we're, we're going to lose everything. And that, that's pretty much where I'm coming from. <laughs> Your cat's trying to snub you out. Um, but man, it, look, man, just uh, where, where can the people find you, brother? What where, where, where is it that you do? Give a little bit about yourself before you, you get out of here. I don't want to hold you up. Well, um, you know, I'm, I'm Texas Cubensis King. Been here a while. Um, I'm the owner of Pooh God. We now have the Pooh God Colorado up and going. And, um, you know, I, I'm a substrate and grain company. Uh, we do a lot of private genetic work for people that are, you know, looking for really uh, premier stuff. And um, I, I am I'm all about this community. You know, I don't want to I don't want to lose everything that I work for and everything you work for. And all these other people that have put their time and blood and faith and soul into this. I don't want to see it go away and I don't want to see it get washed out. So, you know, if there's anything that anybody needs or had needs advice or just wants questions, you know, feel free to reach out to the PooGodTX at gmail.com. Um, 
But as far as, as what I do, you know, substrates and grains is my bread and butter. And there's no order too small or too big. We'll take care of you. But, um, but yeah, as, as far as all this stuff goes, man, if there's anything I can do to help anybody, anyone that's out there trying to breed or is breeding that is questioning their own work or just wants to have a second opinion, I mean, feel free to email me or DM me. And if I'm you know, if, if I'm not responding to the DMs, leave a comment under a picture that says, check your DMs. You know, it, there's a system to get a hold of me and we, we can make it happen. But um, but yeah, that's what I do, you know, and I, I feel like most people know that at this point. And if you don't, man, I'm happy to fucking bring you on as a new customer. Uh, we, we do a lot of a lot of really uh, special stuff for people. You know, if, uh, I'm all about helping people who are hard on money and all that kind of stuff. So just talk to me. And if there's anything I can do to to get you growing and, and get you doing something that no one else could do, I'm here for you. And, you know, I always appreciate being on these videos with you and and hooking and jiving with you on, on all these topics of the day. And um, like I said, man, I'm always here for anybody. So just give me a call or an email and I'm, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Definitely, my brother. As always, of course, all his information will be in a, a, a pinned comment down below. So if you just want to go check out his website, his Instagram, all that good stuff, you guys can go check him out. Brother, thank you so much for joining me on this video. And, you know, hopefully with your words, my words, and everybody else who joins in, hopefully we can bring this together and make a difference. Thank you again, brother. And I really appreciate the time. Dude, my brother Willie, it's always a pleasure, man. I love you, and I hope you have a fantastic day, and we'll get together soon, man. We'll catch up. You too, my brother. I love you too. So you guys just heard from Texas Cubensis King. That's his input on, you know, what's going on. But I have to bring in my other brother, and this guy works extensively in hybridization projects. Actually, he was the first psilocybin cup winner with one of his hybrids. And I want to bring him in to get his point of view because I think it's important for everybody to get to speak their feelings on this topic. So without further ado, I want to bring in my brother, Magic Michael. Doma. What's up, Willie? Trip Team fam. When we got into mycology, you know, there was only one hybrid that was really out there, which was ape. And I spoke about this earlier, right? Whether you fall on the side of it's just an isolated mutation or you fall on the side that it's a legitimate hybrid, it really doesn't matter. That That's pretty much what was around for a long time, right? In the space of hybrids. Now, in our era of social media, Instagram, things like that, YouTube, now you're seeing more and more pop up every single day. What is your take on that? Is it, is it statistically possible for there to be that many hybrids popping up all the time? Um, I think absolutely not. And I kind of feel a little bit partially to blame because several years ago when we started the Tidal Wave project, that's what this was all about. It was about um, creating a hybrid between the penis envy and the B plus strain. And it was kind of met with a little bit of controversy. And um, not to say that there's any right or wrong way to do it. We've been experimenting with many different ways of hybridization. And we actually tried to streamline a, a tech. I have like these buffers now that make it pretty easy and stuff like that. But if you're trying to make a hybrid, regardless of how you're going about it, you have to have good documentation. You have to be like taking pictures, taking notes, like a lot of it. And if you're doing that kind of work and you feel like you made your own hybrid, naturally you have to have a, a, a lot of proof and, and also you have to kind of keep the credit of the spores that you used and the land race strains that you used and where they came from. Like I always try to include like in my descriptions and in my projects, where I got my spores from. I try to credit the creators of the original spores that I used. Now I see a lot of people like 
renaming like isolations and stuff like that. And I think that really discredits and just is a disservice to the community because it, it basically discredits all those original creators. With your Tidal Wave project, and I know you've got a bunch of other projects that you're working on and stuff and have worked on, but with that, how did you maintain the integrity of it? Like how, how when, so when you came forward, how did you say, all right, look, we're going to come forward with this, but here's everything to back it up, verify it for yourself. And if you find an issue with it, approach me and we could talk about it, but you put everything out there and how do people follow the same path that you did to say like, all right, this is a verifiable hybrid. So it's been like five years now. So it's kind of like an ongoing project. And as we move forward and get into more testing and DNA sequencing, we'll really be able to go back and kind of trace some of this stuff. But to answer your question, when I first made the strain, like basically your biggest thing is backing up all your spores, backing up all your original clones and master backups and stuff like that. And as it goes down the line, Naturally, you're going to see more variations and stuff like that. So being able to go back to work you had a few years ago is always helpful. So that's what we've done. We actually just ran out of original tidal wave backup cultures. So there is no more. So whatever is out there is out there. For the first year and a half, it was actually called the PEB plus project. It didn't have the tidal wave name yet. And we just put the, we knew it was experimental and it was a new thing. So, you know, we were selling prints. I sold them for five bucks just to get the work out there. I wanted people to experiment with it. I wanted to see what they came up with and basically for it to be an ongoing project. Now, since then we've made other strains and we tried to keep documentation on them the same way. But we don't want to like dilute the community with a whole bunch of like crazy ones. So we try to keep really good projects with stringent documentation. We have um, um, a Plex server with, a, with like six or seven years worth of documentation we're getting ready to release soon. soon. So, it's, so it's really still a working project. But if I could just to go back for a minute, because... Um, I see a lot of people like with the isolations. Now, like say like with tidal wave, like when I make an isolation out of the tidal wave strain, like I try to keep it like true to the name so that you still know where it came from. So like, let's, let's, let's just back up a minute. Let's just say, um, yeah, yeah. let's be talking about like, let's say cubensis, right? As, as a species. Now, like we're, we're all humans, right? We're all humans, but there's a lot of different races. We got black, brown, white, and everything in between. So a cube really is not just a cube, just like a human is really just not like a human. Now we have sub, what we call substrings. So the, the variation, like let's say would be, would be tidal wave, um, would, be this, would, would be a substrain of cubensis, right? Because it's a hybrid that I made. Or let's say a land race uh, like Amazon would be a substrain of cubensis. So when I try to make an isolation of one of these strains, I try to, keep, if you do change the name or if you do want to put your little spin on it because you worked it for so long and you feel like a real relationship to this thing, like just try to keep the name true. Like APE, it's albino penis envy. We could still track it like TW2, like um, A Trinity, like, you know, it's from Trinity. Like you try to keep the name the same, not just some crazy name with no explanation or anything like that. So at least like when you enter a competition and it says, it says, um, you know, VAR Amazon, but your ISO is, is um, you know, say penis envy. I always thought penis envy was an isolation of Amazon. Um, you know, I know there's a lot of debate with there. I would really love to sit with you down with you one day and maybe a couple other prominent figures of some of our friends and really get into a conversation and maybe even a little debate about this. I think it would be healthy and good for the community to see. But yeah, just like, um, yeah, renaming the isolations is a bad thing. I think we really, um, naturally, since I make hybrids and I do these projects, I'm a land race, land strain lover. So I try to keep my library right. I know you do. You're always asking me about my hybrids and, and what it is so that you can categorize it right in, into your library. And I think that's very important moving forward, yes.
Now it's time to bring on one person that I, I, I greatly admire. I, I respect the shit out of my sister. She grows. Bear, what's up? How are you doing? I'm good. I'm just working today, getting everybody's orders out. Got home no. safely. Um, trying to beat post office times, you know. So what what is your take on on you know all the hybrids coming out or, or mislabeling or renaming um isolations just something so far from the parent or things like that? Like where where do you stand on it? I've been pretty open about like not using crazy names like monster penis that you know like these we are vagina or pussy and like these crazy like fuck yous fuck this names to things for sure so i've been publicly open like hey let's keep this you know relatively decently pg um my problem is is with new strains i lose uh their lineage and their history so when people rename something um i don't understand where it came from and i'd like to tell stories right with these strains like there's no reason for them to have a this lineage passed down or its history to be remembered so i I find it very in distaste when things are renamed and you lose um where they came from or what they've been um i feel that a lot of it's inaccurate breeding also i don't think that um your first go around you can get these hybrids that people are are naming and a lot of it's novice mistakes no one's intentionally trying to be malicious with this right nobody's trying to do this i think a lot of it's just uneducated people um not getting like the code of the mycology way if that makes any sense right there's an ethics code that we abide by um and i think that like we lose more than we gain by renaming and it does bother me because even me I, I lose like honestly yeti ghosts and a bunch of other shit all looks like ape <laughs> like mm-hmm. can we all real like take a second for that so i'm just i'm at that point i don't think when i rename things or if i do work on a hybrid i'm just going to keep it very simple like i have with like pax dom um and just go like it's a hillbilly but it's also hillbilly and it's homie's cut, so that way you can go ask homie where he got it, and then the the lineage remains the same. So I don't think exactly. I'm, you know. And I also, again, don't name things weird. If you do do this, if this ha- if this is you, and you're doing it, please just keep it like you know. If someone's uh, just keep it PG in a sense. Like don't get gnarly with it. So there you go, guys, a few different perspectives from a few different well-respected people in the community. Now, of course, there's so many other people we didn't hear from. I'm sure a lot of you guys are watching this and we want to hear from you too. Obviously, I can't get everybody on the video, but if you want to, this is an open platform. Drop your comments down below. Let us know what you think. Are you with it? Are you not with it? Do you think it's not a big deal? And if so, why do you think it's not a big deal? I want to hear all different perspectives. Now, just to show you guys how serious this problem is, about an hour ago on Instagram, I threw a post up asking people if they ever received a mislabeled print, culture, syringe, whatever the case may be. And it's absolutely astonishing and shocking how many people have received a mislabeled culture print or syringe. Check this out. So this has been up for one hour and 128 people said that they've received something that was mislabeled. 139 said they haven't. Regardless, this is a big, big issue. That number should never, ever be that high. It's astonishing that it's that high. And like I said, this was just a small test over a one hour period. Imagine if we leave that up or we was able to take data from the entire community, you know, hundreds of thousands of people, maybe even millions of people and ask them the same question, what type of data we would get back on mislabeled cultures, prints and syringes. It's up to us to protect this community. We really, nobody's gonna do it for us. So it has to start somewhere, and this is where it has to start. And if you love this community, if this is your world, if this is the community that brought you in, nurtured you, loved you, and you know 
showed you something great and made you a better version of yourself, don't you want to protect it? It's our job to protect it. Let's protect it together. And this is where we start. We have to start labeling things exactly what they are. If it's an isolation, let people know it's an isolation of this. If it's a hybrid, present the data. Present the data, show that it's a hybrid. Don't just say it's a hybrid. Actually put the data forward and show us that it is an actual hybrid. Show us the connection clamps, show us the plates, show us the clone, show us the monocultures, show us the fusion between the two, because that's going to be the only way we can prove that things are actually hybrids. With that said, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I love you guys. I couldn't do this without you. And I thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for giving me the opportunity to have the platform I have to be able to talk about these issues that we all care about. I'm Willie Maiko, but you guys already knew that. Do good, be good, live good. Namaste.